location, this could be a record crowd at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium for number six and number nine, Notre Dame. It's the first time the Irish have been to Austin, Texas since 1952. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, along with Bob Greasy. Lynn Swan is on the field. Bob, the overcast weather and all of that should be a distinct help for both these football teams today but both of them having won twice highly regarded are literally facing their first test well you know they don't call them preseason games in college they are both 2 and 0 but make no mistake about it this is the start of the season for both teams they both made mistakes in their first game they know where their strengths and they know where their weaknesses are they went back worked on them this game will have repercussions all through the year it is between the tackles today where the hymn will be played. Well, you, that would come from you, a big ugly guy. <laughs> this guy loves the big uglies. Notre Dame wants to play the game in the trenches. They have the advantage in the offensive and defensive lines. Texas, on the other hand, has the advantage at wide receivers and the defensive back. They like to play a quicker game. Notre Dame wants to slow it down. And Bebo is in place one more time. There's been one of these big fellas at every Texas home game since 1916. John Makovic, who says our team we think is ready to step up to the next level. Notre Dame is a season maker for most every team they play. And if you can handle them, you have stepped up to the next level. That is not a myth. It's a simple fact of life in college football. Yep. They're playing on real grass this year here at the home of the Longhorns. And the kick from Sanson carries way back and deep. Beyond the field of play, Curtis Jackson will not return. And here's the starting quarterback for the Longhorns. They need a good day from James Brown. He's got good numbers as a starter. He's got good numbers all the way down until you get down to number 14, and that's not so good. He does have mobility, however, and you can never be sure you've got him until you got him flat of his back. So the Irish defense will be the first test of the day for the Longhorns offense. It is Ricky Williams in at the running back and they call him Little Earl because he has been very impressive. But the first play is a it's a Hummer all the way to the 35 and to the 42 yard line to the senior wide receiver Mike Adams and the crowd comes up roaring. So a big play to start the game for the Longhorns. I think this tells you what Texas needs to do and wants to do. They spread out three wide receivers. They started with three wide, go to their number one receiver. Adams had a tough game last year. Notre Dame wanted to stop Adams. Adams is the man who can make the big plays. They split the backs now for third down and four. The pass underneath is good to the tight end Fitzgerald. It'll be a first down at the Irish 45-yard line. Pat Fitzgerald, a senior from Aurora, California. The defense for Notre Dame. The big down guys, Ronaldo Wynn and Bert Berry, will come from the outside and they come flying. Berry is a Texan from Humble. Wynn is out of Chicago. They are very good. The backers are also very good, though Corey Miner is only a sophomore. He was a starter most of last year. Ricky Williams is the single back for Texas on first down inside the 45. Passes away to the sideline. The pass is good to Mike Adams. Mike Adams curling in front of the corner. Hauled it in just right on the marker at the 34-yard line. It's another Texas first down. The sun has not yet come out bright. If it comes out bright, it'll probably get up into the high 80s before the game is done. But right now, it is really very comfortable. Yeah, it's, I, I almost want to use the word pleasant, but uh, a couple days ago, it was hot and humid. Brown hands inside. There's some daylight for Williams, a 220-pound sophomore out of San Diego. And he cracks inside the 15 to the 14. That's a good solid gain of five yards. All right, for Texas, the story, sweet music from James Brown. He has to have a big day, the quarterback, and force Notre Dame to throw the football. They have to be able to uh, stop the run and force Notre Dame to go through the air. Texas moving along, second down and five. Ricky Williams, uh, the single back, down on the Irish 14. Possession started on the 20. 
Brown keeps it. He's got a convoy to that side. Now he throws into a crowd. And he's lucky to get it back. Very well put, Keith. Uh, he, good coverage downfield by Notre Dame. And uh, if he was going to throw that ball to Davis, he should have thrown it a lot sooner. He had help over on that side if he'd have planted and threw from a set position he'd have had plenty of blocking help and could have taken his time but Johnny Saunders ran right through it and got some heat on him in two games uh, inside the 20 Texas has scored 10 of 11 times great percentage Sean Mitchell is number three and Jared Coleman is number 29 that's the lineup now and they hand it inside to Mitchell he explodes to the five first and goal and he ran right in behind Dan the right guard. Notre Dame came with a little blitz. Six at number six is Cobbins. Tatum is number two. And a huge hole opened up in the center of that line. Fee bigger, fee bigger the center. And Neal, number 69. Watch Mitchell. It's supposed to go way to the left. He says, hey, I don't need that left. I got a big gap here in the middle. I'm taking it. Second down and goal from the three. Brown wants to throw, loops it into the corner, and touchdown! Mike Dawson for the extra point. Davis will hold it. Jay Humphrey snaps it. And they work. And the double barrel 10 gauge blanks explode out of Smokey the Cannon, and the Longhorns have gone to a 7 to nothing lead. From the other side of the field, behind the defense, this is going to be a great throw. Throwing it to the outside where only Adams can get at it. It's a great drive, 10 plays, big opening drive for Texas. So look at Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator. He has had a chalkboard over there drawing up different plays and different things that the offense did on the opening drive. Notre Dame special teams has always been a specialty for Lou Holtz. You can see here that they are so dangerous and Alan Russell to start the season against Purdue took the opening kickoff the length of the field. So you really got to know what you're doing when you're playing Notre Dame on special teams. It is Chris Stockton kicking off for Texas. It is a very short kick way up the field and the penalty flag flies as the Irish get a good return out of Ken Barry a fullback up across the 30 yard line but let's check the penalty that may move that ball back down the field a bit push in the back by Notre Dame illegal use of the hand so that'll move them back down the field let's go back and look at the touchdown with the quarterback sees out here or two on two by the defense now watch the inside man right here Adams has got all this room to the outside to work he knows that the outside defender is going to come to the inside go ahead and run it let's see it he's going to release upfield now he got all that room to the outside he throws it way away to the outside that's a well designed well thought out play and good execution Ron Paulus who is the senior out of Berwick Pennsylvania He's been a, a victim in some ways. Unfair, Keith. Unfairly, I think, at times. No Absolutely. question. No question. But that happens if you go to if you're a quarterback and you go to Notre Dame, people expect you to be great. Edwards and Denson in the backfield for the Irish now. That's Kravitz, the tight end. Uh, the tight end shifting over to the right side. And ball is back to throw. Half time and goes to Edwards out of the backfield. That will be another Notre Dame first down. A very simple pass. Thrown to the sure hands of the fullback and put it on the Texas side. First down for the Irish at the 47. That's the thing I like about this fullback, uh, Edwards. He can, he's tough. He can run the football. He can catch and he can block. Notre Dame trying to answer Texas' first possession, which wound up with a 
Horns in the end zone and leading seven to nothing with eight minutes and 41 seconds to play in the first quarter. Lou's going through his checklist now. He first drive of the game. He likes to use a lot of different formations and a lot of movement to see what the defense is giving him, and then he reacts to what they're doing. We've got five people up front now for the Longhorns with Westbrook coming up on the line like he's going to blitz. And he is. And they go the other way with Dixon. He loses the man at the line of scrimmage. Keeps on pounding and will take it down for another Notre Dame first down. So that time they get 11 yards on first down. It's an interesting matchup here, Keith, between Lou Holtz, who calls the plays for Notre Dame, and Gary Darnell, who calls the defenses for Texas. Gar Darnell was with Lou Holtz at Notre Dame for two years in 90 and 91. Talking to him the other day, he knows exactly how Lou thinks. He says he's got this list. He's going to go down the first drive or two and see what you do to the different formations, and then he's going to come back and go at your weakness. Call it second down and seven. They give him three yards on that first carry. Paulus gives it away to Kinder. Big hole left side on his way. And he's hauled down inside the 10 by Brian Westbrook. This is what they will do to Texas if they can't find a way to put a thumb in the dike. Well, from behind the offense, watch the guard. That's Rosenthal as the ball is going to be run right up the inside. Rosenthal, the right guard and Spencer 33 right up the middle double teamed Akers I mean Akers Kinder and Edwards in the backfield on first and goal for the Irish from the six yard line and it's Kinder down to about the two so Notre Dame right on the front step trying to answer the opening touchdown drive by Texas Six minutes, 35 seconds to go in the first quarter. What was probably a record crowd at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. Now it's Edwards and Spencer, two fullbacks in the backfield with Edwards, the deep man. He gets it. And he gets down to about the one. The Longhorn hit him behind the line of scrimmage, but they couldn't hold it. That was Aikens that got through there, Keith, 96. Spencer is hurt. Jamie Spencer limping will leave the field. What a collision with between Aikens and the fullback, Edwards. Denson is back now. It'll be Aubrey Denson and Mark Edwards in the backfield. It is third down and goal for the Irish and call it the two. Put it on the two. Paulus loops it into the end zone, incomplete. You know what? Edwards leaping for the ball probably kept Fritlevich from catching it. I don't think either one of them could have had it. Let's take a watch. It's going to be play action. The fullback's going to sneak out in the flat. The right tight end is going to try to get deep to the end zone. I think he's throwing it deep to the... Well, I don't know. There are two of them right there. I think he was throwing to Edward. Field goal try now by Jim Sanson. A 20-yard attempt out of the hole to Hunter Smith. It is up, and good. it is good. So Lou Holtz elects to... Go for the take the three. It's a good call, Keith. And, it's a uh, great drive. You don't want to go all the way down on the road and not get some points out of it. It was a good call. Both coaches say, you know, what a great atmosphere. It's been a lot of hype and a lot of excitement about this game and about Notre Dame coming down to Austin. And both of them said, you know, this is uh, this is what college football is all about. It appears that young Sanson, the freshman, may have won a kicking job for the Irish. He'd been in quite a contest with Scott Sinja. So now Sanson will kick it off. First one he knocked way back into the end zone. This one is way back as well, and Curtis Jackson will not return it. So it'll come out to the 20-yard line, and there the Horns will start with their second possession. 
drive, 82 yards. The only negative, they didn't, didn't finish it off with, with seven. From the 20, James Brown, back to throw again on first down. Gets it down the middle to Fitzgerald, the tight end. Move the chains out to the 39. His opening play of the game was a 22-yarder on his second possession. His first down snap is a 19-yarder. Uh, a lot of passing on first down, and the, the protection was there just long enough. Just long enough, he's going to be hit from the left side. I think that's Dansby that gets in there just as just after he released the football. The home team, the Texas Longhorns, lead the visiting Fighting Irish of Notre Dame by a score of seven to three. We go to the second quarter of play now. Willie, here's your first quarter numbers. Look at the uh, yards passing for Texas, 99. Notre Dame's getting theirs on the ground, rushing for 72. And the key stat, Texas, three of four on third down conversions, always keeps the drive going. <laughs> Put it on the 39-yard line, and the pitch to Ricky Williams. And Williams turning the corner with a little power now, picking up about three yards on the play. Do you sense... Bob, that Texas may be gaining a little confidence in running the ball? I, I think so, Keith, and they're doing it with their passing game. They're, they're, they're widening and getting the linebackers for Notre Dame thinking pass, and that's opening up some of the run. You just saw the first quarter stats. Texas had a lot of passing yardage in that first quarter. That probably means they're going to have to get a little more support out of the secondary from the safeties, and if that happens, then the middle opens up for you. Second down. Ricky Williams catches it and shakes off a tackler and has a first down at the Irish 36-yard line. LaRon Coppins had him cold. Corey Miner almost got round the quarterback. Coppins had Williams, and neither one of them quite got there. All right, take a look. Man-to-man -man coverage. Linebacker on fullback, and he just breaks a tackle. Cobbins should make that tackle, but Williams is tough to bring down. I really like that kid, Keith. So once again, the pass is involved in a key play. Inside, this time, Williams. Well, he just ran over an Irish defender, but the Irish defender was tough enough. Ivory Covington to knock him out of bounds. Here's Swanee. Well, Keith, you're talking about the safeties having the support on the run. For Notre Dame, they're going to have to get support without number 29, their starting safety, uh, Johnny Saunders. He came out of the ball game. He has a torn ligament in his left knee, Keith. He thought he could go after the injury, went three plays, realized he couldn't, came over the sideline. He's got ice on it. He will not be back in the ball game. Then that's a tough blow for Notre Dame. They only have eight scholarship defensive backs. Now they're down to seven. Third and 13. Out of the shotgun and has good protection. Hits his man right on the numbers. Great pass to Mike Adams. Keith, they're just picking up, but it all starts up front here with the protection. But watch Adams. He comes down deep and he's just going to run a square in to the inside. Man to man coverage with two deep, two deep safeties. Adams does a nice job of getting inside of him, and the throw is where it needs to be. And Ricky Williams, a single back on first down at the Irish 31-yard line. Well, now they show blitz on first down. They pick it up, passes away to the sideline with quick cover. And out of bounds for about an eight-yard pickup is Curtis Jackson. Now Jackson has come back from injury. And by having him over on that side, it takes a lot of pressure off Mike Adams on the other side. Good point, Keith. Uh, just a down and out. He was out all last year with a knee injury. Not a very good out route. He just kind of went down and bent it around. But when you got single coverage and a big cushion, that's all it takes. And it's second down and two. Ricky Williams. No, it's Mitchell. Oh, look at that move. All the way to the five. First and goal, Texas. I think Mitchell.
Bates was getting a little tired of all this little Earl business, you know. Yeah. He's pretty good, too. I'll well, show you something. He's had a hip problem the last couple of weeks and had really gotten a lot of carries. He gained over 1,000 yards last year. He's a slasher. He's not very big, only 5'10 and 195, but uh, he's a local kid. You put a dent in your ice cream truck, though, with one like right that. here in Austin. On first and goal from the five now. Brown gives it to Williams. And Williams will have about two yards. Number 13, Burt Berry, right there with him. Berry, a 6'3 senior, 245 pounds from Humble, Texas. And he, yeah, they got, uh, they got 14 Texans on this roster for Notre Dame, and five of the defensive guys, Keith, are starters. I think you mentioned that, but Berry is an outstanding player. He's been a three-year starter for Bob Davey, and talking to Bob, he says, you know, I, you know, I got him. I got my defensive front seven where I want him now. My defensive backs are down a little bit. Second down and goal as Adams goes in motion, and they give the ball to Holmes, and Fleet Holmes dives into the end zone. Touchdown. Dawson, who's coming off knee surgery. He had a reconstruction thing on his plant leg. He's come back strong, and he will pop it out of the of Davis, and it's good. 8.30 to go in the first half of Texas, 14 to 3. 69, the guard there is Dan Neal, the All-American. You follow him, most of the time there'll be a hole there. Look at the drive, 11 plays, and they took it down for a touchdown. Texas has had the ball three times, and they've had it for 10 plays, nine plays, and then 11 plays. So they've had control of the football and the yardage. We're talking about the size of the Texas campus, is 357 acres, and the enrollment is closing in on 50,000. That's a, well, that's a big city. <laughs> You're right. From the 35 now, Chris Stockton will kick it off for the Horns. Emmett Mosley is the deep man for Notre Dame. 14-3 the long time game with 8.30 to play in the first half. And Mosley drifting five, six, seven yards deep in the end zone will not return it. like an 18 wheeler coming around the corner <laughs> yeah. and leading it. Yeah, and uh, Denson was just like a free rider on the back of it too. This is why this is why uh, Edwards number 44 is so good. He can Watch run the good. ball, but he can catch the ball, but he can also block. Now, now Denson says I'm not leaving him. I'm hanging right behind 44. That's a good license number to follow. This, I'm holding on. I'm faster than he is, but I'm not going to pass him. <laughs> He hit the first down at the 46 for the Irish, and Kinder is in at tailback now. And he has it over the right side, some daylight. And finally, after being hit first by Trey Thomas, is taken down by Chris Carter. But it took two solid licks to bring him down, and he picked up yeah. seven yards. There's a look at Aikens, number 96. The Notre Dame line double teams him initially. Acres 76 pulls out, and then a good block by Edwards, number 44, just out of the screen there, finishing off his block. Good blocking by that Notre Dame line. Experience line, Keith. Second down and three. The ball is on the Texas 47. Wallace looks down the middle, throws a hammer, pass from Pete to Clement, the tight end. And for the first time, Pete has one he can catch, and I mean that was a bullet. Well, here, play quarterback for Notre Dame right here. Everybody wants to go to Notre Dame, play quarterback. Look, you can't see much, can you? 
Well, you see 98's Kerplevich right there. Now you got to throw over all those guys. It's a good thing they didn't have their hands up. Uh, then the quick release would have come in. Paulus has a quick release. He's got that, and he can get the ball to these receivers. First down at the Texas 31. Changing the play. Crowd jumps in. Keeps it. Hops it. That is a very good way to require a little helmet painting when he gets home because uh, they got after him. Somebody uh, yelled, the quarterback's got it. Boom, uh, here comes nine. Uh, every time you talk about Ron Paulus with Lou, he always says, if he can stay healthy. Well, not every time, but he says that a lot. Well, you know, one of the way, and, and, and Ron says, hey, I'm healthy. I can take a hit and practice. I've done it. But if you don't want to run a lot of option if you want to try and keep the quarterback healthy. And I think that's the first option that they run today. But Lou loves the option. Second down and five. Well, he weighs 218 pounds, 6'2", so he's a pretty good-sized fellow. And that ball to Kinder. And he comes full bore into the right side of the line. And he is brought down just short of the 20. But the option, Keith, is one thing that Holtz wants to continue to show to the other team defensively because it limits some of the things that you can do. Move the chains again on Kinder's run to the right side. He got in behind uh, Rosenthal and uh, Pettigrew. He's in there at right tackle for Dowdy right now. Now you're going to go double wide with Nelson over there as the outside man. And Kinder, the tailback, is to the boundary side of the field. First downs, Notre Dame has run on 12 of 13 up to this point. And they run again with Edwards. And Tyson King just misses in that kind of cross is number 18, Cody Danaher, to make the tackle. <laughs> 16, I may correct it, Chris Carter. Carter's a 207-pound senior. He's from Tyler. And of course, that's where Earl Campbell came from. The Rose City of Texas. Second down and eight. And Robert Farmer is in the backfield for the first time today. Spread formation for Notre Dame. Farmer's number 31. On the option, fresh leg, wide open. He Well, Lou's going down his checklist, and he's seeing how you play these different formations. And then he says, all right, how are you playing the formations? All right, you're doing that? I'll run the option. You can't defense that, that formation if I run the option. That's one of the reasons I think they come out of the blocks next year with everybody reasonably healthy as one of the favorites to win it all because they will have Jarius Jackson at quarterback and he's an option oh, quarterback. You got that right. He's much like Tony Rice was when he led them to a national championship. Jim Sansom is in for the extra point try. Sansom is a freshman out of Scottsdale, Arizona. And it's good. And so with 4.08 to play in the first half, it's 14 to 10, Texas. Tyson King fit blitzes from pitch to the outside. Mosley a good block. Fresh legs do help. That was Farmer's first carry. There's Mr. Farmer who stuck it in the end zone. And Samson now will kick it off as they go 80 yards in nine plays. Shows class, Keith. A team down on the road, comes back, a nice long drive, answers the touchdown of the home team. And the kick. A little bit of a win holds it up for Curtis Jackson. Jackson in the middle of the field and comes across the 30 to the 31. Well, Lou Holtz couldn't have drawn up a defense better for his option. The two linebackers are going to blitz. Paulus is going to come down the line of scrimmage and option off of the in man on the line. Farmer in the game for the first play, as you mentioned. You blitz inside, a blitz you don't do against an option. Then man coverage, there's nobody to cover the man that you toss the ball to. Gary Darnell, the uh, defensive coordinator, says, 
We just hope when we do blitz, they're not running the option. Third down and 15. The clock showing 3.30 to go in the first half. 14 to 10, Texas leads. Brown back. What a hurry. He's got a major league problem right now, I'll tell you, because he had uh, uh, Bill Wagasey and Burt Berry on his back and uh, turned back inside, and Berry got him. Uh, he had big problems. Wagasey was coming from behind, or else he could have circled back. This Notre Dame defense has played well the first two games of the year. Take a look. They lead the nation in scoring in rushing defense, and total defense are fourth. Granted, only two games, but uh, Bob Davey likes those numbers. That was not a very good possession for Texas. And a very good one for Notre Dame. Might, might, might have something to do with momentum yep. heading toward the halftime. Yep. Mark Schultz now has to step from his end zone, gets his kick away. That's a good one. Oh, my goodness, that's a good one. Uh, great kick. They're kicking yes. away. You know, Way the back down there at the 37-yard line. They don't want Denson to get started. That's a good kick by Schultz. 50 yards and no return. So here comes Notre Dame now at 2.37 to play in the first half with Edwards and Denson double wide on a couple of wide receivers up at the top of the screen. Now this is Mosley coming towards it. The pitch goes to the tailback, Benson. And Benson is hit. And I'll find that man's number. That man is number 96, Chris Akins. Akins in the middle, 96. Short. He's keeping Kaczynski from getting off and getting on to a linebacker. Not only did he keep Kaczynski off of a linebacker, but he finally got down the line, held on to the center, and made the play. He's a force. And it's second down and 10 with two minutes to go in the first half. Again, double wide at the top, and Paulus back to throw it. Looks left, looks right, finally throws out to the fullback coming out of the backfield, who was his third choice, and it's good for five yards. Good call, Keith. Uh, you're exactly right. In fact, not only the third choice, he looked all the way to the left side of the field, came back to the middle, and went back to the right side. I was talking with Dave Roberts, the offensive coordinator that works with uh, Holtz uh, and with Paulus, and he said this kid is, is, is not only smart, he thinks he's brilliant. He is that intelligent. He's been here four years, so he knows what's going on. Third and five. Crowd trying to help. Blitz. They run it. And they break the blitz. And they get the first down. Denson broke a tackle and picks up the first down. Gary Darnell says, I blitz once. You burned me for a touchdown with an option. I'm going to come again. He's filling all the gaps. And he's doing this because he thinks he needs to stop the run, the Notre Dame run. And one of the ways you do it is by blitzing. It's run down blitzes, or you can do slants, or you can go five and six defensive linemen. You've got to get your hand, wrap him up when you get your hands on him. Back goes Paulus on first down from the 49. Kriplevich the tight end. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 41 of Texas. You that's saw that close to a first down. If you saw the graphic, that's only the second pass that Notre Dame has thrown on first down. They have 14 runs now and two passes. Physical strength will be a factor in this game in the fourth quarter. You got it right. Minute 18 to go in the first half. Edwards, the single back, trips at the top. Wallace looking to throw it. Comes it. And it is. They're going to give him the catch. It's uh, Nelson. Lucky Nelson. And he took it right off the grass at the 29-yard line for another first down. Watch this. This is, this is a fault of Ron Paulus right here. The man is open. Step up. Now throw it. Now he throws it low. He's got to dive into it. You need to get the ball higher. Quarterback with a strong arm needs to get that ball to his numbers. And he's had a couple of guys diving when they should have been open and running with the ball. Benson is the single back. He wants to know <laughs> what the snap oh, it's a check off. He says, which way are you going with it? <laughs> oh, going left. Okay. Yeah, I'll go left. And get a first down inside the five-yard line. Chris Carter 
finally dragged him down, and it's first and goal for the Irish at the three. What happens is, Paulus comes up to the line of scrimmage right here, and he says, all right, where do I want to run this play? Do I want to run him left, or do I want to run him right? So he has his keys, going to run between the linemen or away from the strong safety or whatever the key is. Paulus is smart enough that he makes all those calls at the line of scrimmage. These are some of the things that he does for the Notre Dame offense. 47 seconds. And right now, one would suggest to you that Mo may go to the clubhouse with a white shirt. I think you got that right, Jeff. Denson and Edwards in the backfield on first and goal from the three. Wallace keeps it. Rose Edwards, touchdown, Notre Dame. And the crowd got kind of quiet, except for about 5,000 down here in the corner of the stadium. <laughs> Uh-huh. Well, watch the top, the defensive man right there. He's going to be blocked by Edwards, and then Edwards releases. This is just good film study and preparation by the coaches because they saw there was nobody else left to cover him if he blocked him and released. Samson for the try. It's good. And so with 27 seconds to go in the first half, the Irish go to the lead for the first time today, 17 to 14. Edwards blocks him, slow blocks, and then releases. And then Kirkpatrick, 45, is caught in between, and a nice play on both ends. The half is over. And Darrell Royal, when he was coach here, walked into the Texas Longhorns at halftime and said, men, there's a hell of a fight going out there in the Cotton Bowl. It'd be nice if some of you joined it. <laughs> And that's kind of where we are right now. We have scored Notre Dame 17, Texas 14 at halftime in Austin. The teams have returned from the locker room here at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin. Texas and Notre Dame locked up in a 17 to 14 ball game. Here's Lynn Swan. Well, thank you, Keith. You know, I talked to Lou Holtz as he left the field. Talked to him about running out option against man coverage. He said, you know, when we're getting a lot of man. The option works well against them. We'll continue to do that. His biggest concerns, however, were injuries he had to a Johnny Standers, the knee injury, uh, Jamie Spencer, the ankle injury, and Mike Doherty, the offensive uh, tackle. And uh, that was his major concern. He knows that this Texas team will come back out. Now, when I talk uh, to the Texas side, I'm telling you, Makovic was a little concerned about this running attack. He felt like they just hadn't gotten the game going. He realizes that Notre Dame is, is audibly when his team comes up for the blitz, so they want to change those blitzes around. They'll continue throwing the football on their offense, check their blitzes, do something very different, and, he said, continue to try and improve the running attack. Keith? All right, Swanee, and here are your numbers at halftime. Score is 17 to 14. The number of plays about the same. First downs about the same. Look at the rushing yards for Notre Dame, and that is key. Texas to win this game has got to slow that down. Of course, Texas getting theirs through the air, 163 yards passing. No turnovers in the game. Eight penalties in the first half for Texas. Time of possession about the same, and third down conversions. Notre Dame is not getting into as many as Texas, and Texas is making more than half of them. But the key, Keith, coming out is the Notre Dame running game. They just kind of took over from the from the middle of the second quarter on. They just they just took over. And, and look at these possessions. They had the ball only four times and not very good field position, but they scored on three out of four of their possessions, and they always had the ball for a lot of plays. That tells me that the Texas defense is not stopping that Notre Dame offense. I still think physical strength will decide it in the fourth quarter. Well, it's hot. Uh, yep. Lynn tells us that it is, it is humid on the field. Uh, the blessing is that it's not sunshiny because if it was sunny, oh, boy, they would not Booker. maybe not make it to the end of the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At least when I got off the airplane the other day, I wouldn't have made it. <laughs> All right, Texas will kick off. Chris Stockton will hit it. Alan Rossum, the deep man. 
to the Irish, and they don't want him to get his hands on it where he can return it. And he's way back there in the end zone, going the other way, and there will be no return. Nice job of kicking it away from him and over in the corner. Notre Dame leaders, Paulus, good half. 9 of 12, 86 yards and a touchdown, no turnovers. A lot of rushing. Denson had set in 70. Farmer had the touchdown with an 18-yard run. Edwards, the fullback, and Kaplevich, the tight end, lead in receiving. The, the wide receivers, Johnson had two. Mosley had one. Three wide outs, bottom of the picture, and here's Edwards, the single back. Pumps it and lets it go. Throwing it for Nelson, and it is incomplete. Rocky Nelson, a freshman from Harrisburg, PA. Interesting, that's a nice call by Notre Dame. Gary Darnell, the defensive coordinator for Texas, says that Notre Dame throws more screens than anybody, and they throw them to the wide receivers. They had averaged 10 screens the last two games. And normally, from that spread formation, Notre Dame lines up in the spread, fakes the wide receiver screen, and tries to get the man downfield. Good coverage by Texas. Second down. scrimmage Aikens Chris Aikens had one hand on him but he couldn't hold him and he turned it back up field and again he runs for six yards maybe more like seven and make it third down and three Darnell who was with Holtz says he is the best big game coach he has ever seen he makes great adjustments at halftime he finds out what you're doing where you're vulnerable and comes out and attacks him in the second half. Third and a long three. Wallace has a lot of time, but he can't hook up with the intended receiver, Malcolm Johnson. The coverage was from Taji Allen, number two. And so the Irish get one first down, but can't turn two, and they'll have to punt it. Hunter Smith is in. His only kick of the day so far was a 54-yarder. Mike Adams, the wide receiver, is deep for the horns. He's trouble there, too. He's run back a couple of putts in his career. Notre Dame 17, Texas 14. Yeah, didn't get all of that one. Bouncing around, Adams picks it up. He saved about 10 yards. He didn't want it first off, but he had not called fair catch. Once the ball bounced right to him, he took it, and it'll be Texas at the 21-yard line, a 46-yard punt. Sitting by me is a gentleman, at, and I don't even remember the year, but Daryl Royal and I did a game together in Atlanta, Georgia, at Grant Field, and Notre Dame was playing Georgia Tech a long time ago, maybe, what, 74, 5, something like it, that? It was around 74, <laughs> 75. I don't remember the exact year either, Keith. It, it was a lot of fun, though. You coached for 20 seasons here. You won uh, three national championships, 11 conference titles, and went to 16 bowls, and your name is now on the stadium. You must be proud. I really am proud. It's, it's kind of hard to believe. I have to pinch myself. Longhorns come up on first down from the 27-yard line. James Brown, low quick passes to Curtis Jackson. And Jackson spinning will take it up for about an eight-yard pickup. Did you ever in your wildest imagination when you came here back in 1957 that someday they'd be talking about 100,000 seats here? No, I did not. I, I knew that football might grow like it had had in the past because we were having larger crowds then than we'd had 20 years ago. But uh, it, it just seems to get bigger and better every year. It's quite a festival. Second down, a yard and a half. Inside to Ricky Williams. So the man who hit 211 for the Piedmont Bowl Weevil just past <laughs> summer picks up a first down. That's the steps not fair. Ball horns and move the chains. Take a look from behind the offensive line. The center, Feebigger and Neal. 79 as Adams gets a piece right up the middle. Put the ball at the 46-yard line. 17-14, Notre Dame leading. This is Mitchell. He broke the first. 
missed tackle, and the kid from Austin gets it down to the 30-yard line. So he picks up something out of it, and they'll be looking now at third down. The foot speed, the, the way that, that speed has become the emphasis of college football, is startling to me, Darrell. I mean, uh, you've got 220 pounders playing linebacker that run full fours. They can fly. And this turf, Keith, is a fast turf, even though it's grass. Third down and five. That's Fitzgerald, the tight end. Brown back, gets a little heat, gets it away, and the pass is deflected and it is incomplete. Mike Adams was the man in the neighborhood, and the Horns are now looking at fourth down and five. I remember one time when you had Russell Erksleben, place kicker, over here at Texas, and uh, Tony Franklin was over at A&M, and we we got a measurement on the, the uh, velocity of the ball over the first meter, and that sidewinder had about a mile and a half an hour faster ball than Russell, who was a straight-on big guy who kicked it. And these sidewinders have really taken over the kicking game. That's the way to kick. There's no doubt about it. You know, uh, Coach Wilkinson, let's see what happens here. It's long enough. It's good. I mean, that thing counts from another 15 yards. He may be, he may be the best field goal kicker in the country right there. 47 <laughs> yards, and we're all even at 17 with 8.09 to play in the third quarter. Smoke of the cannon booming in the background. For all of that noise that thing makes, it's only two 10-gauge uh, blinks. But every time I hear it, I can always remember that 10-gauge uh, bucking me right out of the bat hole when <laughs> I'm almost froze to death. There's a scoring drive, seven plays, 43 yards. And Keith, this is going to be a close game. And if it is, like we think, Texas may have the advantage with Dawson because he is an outstanding kicker. He can pump it. 8.09 to go in the third quarter. Notre Dame comes up with Denson and Edwards in the backfield. Mosley and Johnson are the wideouts. It's the up man, Edwards, the workhorse. And he bangs in there for five yards, or close to it. He's a 239 pound senior from Ohio. Be the last play of the third quarter right here. Ball is changing it. Coming up on 15 seconds to go in the quarter. Hands it off. Pass penetration by Chris Aikens, was it? No, it was Tyson King that got his feet from under him. Number 50. And the third quarter ends at a 17-17 tie, and we'll be back after this message on the word from our ABC station. The final quarter is here at the Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin. 17-17 tie. Notre Dame ball, third down and one with Denson and Edwards in the backfield. Ball is at the 45-yard line. The quarterback, Paulus, keeps it. Follows the line surge, and from here, it appears the spot is sufficient for the first down. Well, we've come to the fourth quarter, Keith, and we talked early on this game about substituting heat saving yourself for the fourth quarter winning it at the end this is where it, uh, it all comes down to you'll see uh, all the players on the field they all raise their hand four four fingers in the air this is what it's about Casey Hampton is in at nose guard now giving Aikens a breathe Chris has been pounding hard in the third quarter Wallace hands it they try to go right 
into the middle of the line uh, where Hampton had just arrived it doesn't work because Aaron Humphrey, a freshman out of Lubbock, is there to wrap up Mark Edwards. Yeah, true freshman. He was been a big surprise. Uh, he's uh, actually started this ball game. He, they got a lot of competition at linebacker, but uh, they like this kid. They think he's really going to be good. Number 18, Sakai Champion, is in at a wideout. On second and eight from the 48. Handed off to Denson. Hit behind the line of scrimmage, and they stop it. Just a little short of where the ball was snapped. Bray Mosier, the sophomore from Bernie, made the tackle. He's been very active today. Right now, he comes off the field limping. It is third and eight for the Irish. They put Kreplevitz, the tight end, flex him out about five yards. Notre Dame is four of nine in third down conversions. Here they come. Yes. Got it away. Kreplevitz is out there and can't make the play. And Paulus is on his back. And the man who hit him was Aaron Humphrey. And it'll be fourth down. The difference in the second half has been the Texas defense making the adjustments that needed to be made and not allowing Notre Dame to uh, keep the ball. Irish led 17-14. Texas has tied it in the third quarter. We're now in the fourth quarter. We're still tied. And the punter is Hunter Smith. His fifth punt of the day. Ball came back to him on the ground. Not a very good kick. He shanked it. So let's see where they put it. At the 35-yard line, first down, Texas, a 17-yard punt. If you were with us when we went to halftime, we reminded you of an old Daryl Royalism about going into the locker room at halftime in an Oklahoma game at the Cotton Bowl. It's a hell of a good fight going on the field, boys. Y'all ought to try to get involved in it. Well, one would get the feeling that John Makovic must have done something similar because his Longhorn certainly got involved in the fight in the third quarter as they shut down Notre Dame. He got with it. And they take over the football at the 35-yard line, and on the carry, Ricky Williams picks up a little more than five yards. But we are 17-17, and I haven't seen any indication so far that either side's going to give up. Yep. There's Cobbins. He's uh, one of the leading tacklers. He grew up in Kansas City. He's the youngest of eight children, Keith. And if you were looking for trouble in the neighborhood, he said you could always find it. But his mom and dad were there to keep him straight. The big eight schools weren't interested. Maybe it's because he didn't <laughs> didn't run at uh, 40 very fast. He ran about 4'8". Second down and a short five. Brown back to throw it. Ball is tipped. And if it's not tipped, it's intercepted. Yep. But because it was tipped, yep. the Notre Dame man could not get to it. It was Lalonde Cobbins, I thought. Cobbins. And uh, Bob Davey was saying the other day, he says, he says he's good about coming and watching film. He says as long as there are some snacks around the football office, he'll be in there to watch tapes. He says he's a junk food. He says he loves pies. Pies? He says, pie. I love pie, apple pie, cherry pie. He says, I can run a 4 8 40. Doesn't matter if I weigh 250 or 220, I'm going to run a 4 8. Third down and five. Brown hit his tight end, Fitzgerald, and Fitzgerald picks up the first down. Notre Dame claiming the ball came out. The man coming in from the side has placed it down. It's only the second completion of the second half for James Brown. But that is a big, big effort by Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, the tight end, Keith, is almost the security blanket for James Brown. He's your tight end, and if you've got a tight end that can move around the middle and get open, I mean, you can find him a lot of times. This is Ricky Williams.
defense. Number two is Tatum. Nice block in there. Tatum gets blocked. Neo 69 did a nice job. Fee bigger. Now he just breaking tackles. Four is Corey Miner. Well, coming into this game of the yardage that Williams had picked up, and he had a lot, 160 of those yards had come after contact. So he is tough guy to bring down. And Sean Mitchell now powering ahead. And Texas blowing Notre Dame off the ball right now for two successive plays. It's just short of the 10. The difference in the second half is the Texas running game. Robbins is six, Dansby is 51. They both tried to go in the same hole. Now a huge gaping hole. Keith, they may be getting tired. Could be. Well, they in that defense, those same Most players have been out there. Most of them the whole ball game. They're not a deep team. Not this year. This is Williams. to a first down. Texas may not only be sending a message to the country, but particularly to the membership of the Big 12. A couple of inches short of the first down, but no more than a foot and a half from the goal line. It's William. It's touchdown. out of Matt Davis hole Jay Humphrey snap for the extra point Good. up front it's Humphrey and Neal and Fee bigger and Fitzgerald and a great effort by Williams 24 17 Texas Chris Stockton to kick off for Texas Chris is a freshman from Katy. And the deep man for the Irish is Emmett Mosley, a senior from Aurora, Colorado. Very short kick, and it's And recovered by Notre Dame. Ken Barry, a fullback, almost lost it. First down for the Irish now. They trail 24-17 at 10-49 to play in the ball game. Sun is out. Mosley, the Texas man, was a little late getting there, and he made a fine catch. And it's Edwards and Denson in the backfield. Denson. He's a slippery fellow. Chris Carter finally makes the tackle, but again, on the first down run, he's got at least seven yards. Now, and this is the best field position for Notre Dame that they've had today. You saw uh, James Brown on the sideline with the headphones on. Sometimes you can, he's a playmaker, and sometimes you can try too hard to make a play. If there's nothing there, throw it out of bounds and come back for another play. Well, they gave him six on the mark, making it second down and four. He's down at the Texas 21-yard line. Where do they call it? The 22-yard line is where it's marked. And they pitch it back to Denson. Good block there. Another tackle missed. 
And he's finally out of bounds, and he's got eight yards. Poor tackling right there. It all gets down. All the fancy stuff and all the formations and all the special teams and everything you talk, it all gets down to blocking and tackling. And Texas, on this drive, is not tackling well. Of course, Denson, they're trying to tackle him. He's kind of a shifty guy, too. Well, this thing's turned around a bit, too. The Texas defense now may be a little winded because they were out there for a long possession. Offense gave them no rest. And they're right back out there and, and under siege right now. Second down, a yard and a half. Up man, Edwards. That's a first and goal for the Irish at the four-yard line. All right, on the sideline for the Irish, Keith. The wheels are rolling now. So we're going to tie this up. We're, we're go tie it up. We're going we're gonna to tie it up and uh, gonna score the touchdown. We're down seven points. We kick the field goal, kick the extra point to tie it up. I think you do. Overtime. Overtime, or you got a lot of time left in the regular, uh, regular game, over five minutes. First and goal inside the five. Pitch it to Denson. A pretty good hit there. Benson's up over 130 yards on the day. It's 22 catches and 131 yards. Aaron Humphrey, 46, Dusty Ren, uh, for, Renfro, 46, and Humphrey, 49. Second down and goal. Gain of a half a yard on the play. Kinder, the deep back, they give it to Edwards up front. He's crawling around. He's got it over the goal line. It can't be a touchdown. His knee wasn't down. Uh, Unless they rule his forward momentum. Well, I was stopped. They might have ruled that, but he was crawling over people, so maybe he had to. Laying on top of bodies. I always wonder how these side judge and the line on the side <laughs> guidance could see through all those bodies they anyway. Can't. They can't. I mean, they, they, it's strictly a judgment call. And, and sometimes their ruling on the fourth down may be different than it is on a first or second down. Jamie Spencer has come back on the field with his leg wrapped. He's up there in front of Kinder. Paulus keeps it. He does not get in. Never a big fan of quarterback sneaks. I always felt like you got a guy right behind you that could weigh 235, 40 pounds. But now you use your best play right here. And even if you need a timeout, you take a timeout to get your best personnel and your best play in. Martin comes back in for the goal line defense. Warfield comes out for Texas. Here comes Notre Dame now with Edwards and Spencer. They're not going wide because Denson's not in there. Paulus gives it to Edwards and whistles stop him, and Notre Dame might have jumped. False start for the Irish. All right, take your pick. Both of the ends jump on this play both ends now how do you figure that Keith noise what about the guys in the middle they're closer to the quarterback oh, no. <laughs> Denson comes in now as the ball comes back outside the five fourth and goal eight penalties for 76 yards on the Irish Mosley in motion throw it to Mosley nope Paulus pitches it out to Denson running for the corner touchdown Tyson King had a shot at him, but he couldn't do it. You give it to your speed guy. You either throw it to Mosley or flip it back to Denson. So when it comes to crunch time, Holtz goes back to what he does best, and that is the option. Fourth and five on the five. We need a touchdown. Denson was not in there the play before. Now he goes in. He's rested. You run the option. You flip it wide to him, and you just hope that he can get in it. Two minutes and 54 seconds to play in the game. Here's your extra point try by Jim Sensen. Snap is good. The kick is up, and it is good. And 
so with 2.54 to play, we're tied at 24. And remember, there is an overtime rule. Each team will get possession of the ball from their own 25-yard line if we get to that point. But 2.54 is a goodly bit of time remaining. <laughs> Two fifty four to play a twenty four twenty four tie the sun is out it's about a hundred degrees the only merciful thing right now probably is they're playing on real grass the kickoff by Sensor. goes beyond the field of play Texas ball first down at their own twenty. The two big plays in the ball game to this point. One of them was Paulus on a pitch out to Randy Kinder. Westbrook comes across and just leveled him, took him out of the ball game for a while. And then on Texas last possession, James Brown, rather than eat the ball, tried to do something with it. And what wound up with an interception yeah. and uh, Notre Dame stuck it in the end zone. And of course, he's trying to make a play, and you don't envision the ball being batted up in the in the air, but the, re but the receiver is not open. You need to know when he's open and when he's not. And yeah. this is Ricky Williams, and Williams is up across the 25 to close to the 27. So they get something out of that first down call, make it second down and three. One of the important things when you ponder the Big 12 season as it has its inaugural is Nebraska and Texas do not play each other this season. Right. They may play, though, in the championship game. They might very well. In St. Louis. Ricky Williams, 16 carries, 104 yards, and a touchdown for Texas. And he's still working. Close to the 30. Depends on the mark. And the mark from the man on this side looks like it might be a first down. Close enough to stop the clock. The other thing about Texas going into the Big 12 is that all of the seats between the 30 yard lines are now sold. But as they go into the Big 12, they're following the Big 8 precedent, and all the visiting school tickets will be in the end zone instead of on the 30 yard line. Uh huh. And it's called Monday. It is a first down from the 30. Gets a little heat. Down runs out of it. The, uh, that probably is caused by what happened the last time. Well, he wants to make a play, and he wants to make a play so badly. Like I said before, he threw that ball trying to make a play. Texas has two minutes. They have a great field goal kicker, probably one of the best in the country. They need to get the ball downfield. And they're in no hurry. They do not want Notre Dame to get the ball back in, in regulation time. James Brown is two of seven for 16 yards and one interception in the second half. So he is not hot. John Mitchell on second down and seven. Gets about three. Phil Dawson, but he, he's not a factor yet. There are some ways away from him. Both sides have three timeouts left. They're looking at third and four right now. Yeah, and if, and if, and if Texas makes this first down, they'll be using those timeouts. Time remaining, a minute 15. May have wanted to change the play, but he didn't have time. So time out is called. Ricky Williams single back. Third down and four. James Brown throws it underneath, and it is incomplete. The pass intended for Mike Adams, and Adams took a wicked lick as he came across. It was Cobbins, wasn't it? Yep, Cobbins hit him, and he's walking away very gently. He's looking for some of those cookies from his man, Bob Davey, over there. Good play, good recognition. Cobbins has made two big plays now here in his fourth quarter. Yes, he has. Tight end trying to cross. Oh, 
Ooh. trying to get to Adams inside the tight end, and Cobbins dropping back in his own, just leveled him. Now Schultes needs to deliver with 105. No pressure. Well, he didn't get all of it. He jerked it out of bounds. So both putters have failed to deliver when they really needed it here late in the ball game. That is a 21-yard punt. And Hunter Smith had a 17-yarder a little while ago. So now here's Notre Dame with 59 seconds to play. 59 seconds. The ball is on their 43-yard line. They have three timeouts remaining. And they also have a place kicker with some leg under it. Well, but, but a lot of uncertainty, Keith. Their, their place kicking uh, situation has gone back and forth. Yeah, but he can knock it. You never know. Here's Paulus putting it up from out of bounds. Incomplete. Trying to hit the back down the sideline, and there was nobody there. Denson is their man. He is. He. It, Lewis said that they have no big play players on offense, and Denson, if any, is that one guy. And Ray Mosier is the guy pestering uh, Paulus on almost every play right, right now. And if you're trying to get the ball to somebody, Denson is the guy they want to get the ball to. Second and ten. 52 seconds. Run it up the middle with Denson. Get some daylight. And finally dragged down by Chris Carter. But it's a first down for the Irish. The clock stops at 35 yard line. First down and 44 seconds remaining. Just get the ball to Denson. He is the only guy with the speed that can make a big play. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Autry Denson for Notre Dame, Ricky Williams for Texas. Denson so far, 158 yards, 24 carries, and a touchdown. Williams, 17 carries, 107 yards, and a touchdown. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Paulus back, sets up a screen, throws it underneath to his tight end in the middle, Treplevich. And they get a couple of yards out of it. And the clock is running at 20. Now they stop. 20 seconds to play in the ball game. The ball is on the 33-yard line in possession of Notre Dame. Second down and nine. Now the Irish place kickers are Jim Sanson, who's been doing all the kicking today, a freshman from Scottsdale, Arizona. And Scott Sinja, who was the kicker last year, he's a junior from Melbourne, Florida. 20 seconds to play. Paula sets him. Second down and nine. Pumps it, lets it go. He's got a man. It's overthrown. Couldn't get the ball downfield to number 88, Bobby Brown, who is uh, another one of the lads from Texas. Well, it's single coverage, one of the best secondaries. He's going to uh, stop and go. Well designed. Paulus just needs to throw it up in the air, give him more air. You don't need to hit him perfectly for the touch. Just complete it down and inside the 15-yard line. 14 seconds to play, third and nine from the Texas 33. Crowd coming up. 24-24 time. Paulus pass is drilled, caught by Malcolm Johnson. And that's good for a first down, and that stops the clock with five ticks remaining. And it's time now for the place kicker of Lou's choice. Yeah, that's a great throw there. Got the man open, he found him, he had time. That's the thing, he's had some time to throw. Texas in the secondary is going man coverage, and he hit that, had good protection. So the question is, who comes out of the huddle? Makovic has brought this program a long way. The only regular season loss for Texas last year was at Notre Dame. Holtz's teams have always played well on the road. 
It's Sanson, number 19, the freshman from Scottsdale, Arizona. Coming out, Hunter Smith is out. John Spickelmeyer is your snapper. Five seconds remaining, a 24-24 tie in Austin, Texas. Next for Notre Dame is Ohio State, followed by Washington in South Bend. Texas goes to Virginia. 39-yard field goal try. You make these all the time in practice. Texas 27 to 24. Now looming in the background, the single biggest play perhaps was the interception, the forced throw by James Brown, the Texas quarterback, that gave the Irish the second chance at the tying touchdown. The freshman comes through. So your final score, Notre Dame 27, Texas 24. 